Alright, wheel cylinder replacement. Got the tire off. A jack's over here, a jack stands back there. And I'm not going to get under it. Take that drum off. See all that brake fluid in there? Now, brake shoes appear to be okay for now. They're getting close, but they're not. They're not all that, all that bad. Get the camera up here. You can see blew out right over here. That is where it is leaking. So the next step, I'll take this brake line loose back here. And there are two, should be seven sixteenths screws that hold that cylinder in. Alright, so I'll go get those tools and see if I can't get it all loose. I should not have to take out uh, the shoes and all that stuff. I'll just clean them up when I get done. Keyword, should not have to. All right, I got all the bolts loose from the back side. Let's see if we can't get it out of there. Thought I had the other lines off. Yeah, they're all off of there. Just like that. Now what happens is in these cylinders when you push the brake these little pistons in here which that one is very worn these little pistons come out and makes the brake pad uh, brake shoes come out. Now a lot of the uh, new cars new trucks have disc four-wheel drive disc which are much easier to work on but being as this an old truck, it does not. So let's take this in the shop and look at the two cylinders I have and see which one it might be. I'm gonna have to clean my hands off good because I want to dirty up the boxes so I can take the other one back. If I can get up from here. <laughs> All right, just a minute, we'll go in the shop. All right, I think this one is the one. Set it down. The length is the same. Now we can take this other one without taking it out of the package and see clearly it's way too short. So that one will go back to the park store the next time I'm in town and get my $12 back. It's funny how things on a vehicle like wheel cylinders, brake shoes, pads and all that are so inexpensive to go buy them. And that's the thing that will save your life quicker than anything else. But other parts like a little electronic parts are three and four hundred dollars. Just an observation but you know all right, this one, the old one has a dust cap for the bleeder valve. We'll talk about the bleeder valve here in a little bit. The new one don't. It goes on there just like that. It keeps dirt and stuff from getting in there. And I'll put that back on when we get finished. So that is the culprit. Now, we're going to go try to put it back on. And brake dust and stuff is very, very nasty. I washed my hands a couple times, which is fine. I don't mind getting dirty. And then we will go through the bleeding process and all that cleaning up process once I get it finished. 
All right, now, like I said, it's Wednesday, November 7th, I think it is, 7th, 8th, something like that. It is 84 degrees outside, 97% humidity. I know I live in Florida, but this is not normal. It's supposed to be cool by now. We had a couple of cool days, but I am soaking wet, sweaty. My feet are even sweating. My underwear is sweating. And y'all don't want to hear nothing else about that. So. <laughs> All right, we'll, do, we'll take this piece here out right quick. That's where the brake line goes in. I'll tell you what, let's leave it in there for right now until I get it on there. So I don't want nothing to get in there. This has got to be a closed system. Everything has to fit tight. What's the old saying? Tight, right, and out of sight. So it'll work properly. All right, let's go back outside. All right, let's put it back together. Gonna slide this back in there like that. We'll put these two little bolts back in there, little screws, which wound up being 10 millimeters, not 7 sixteenths. Now the only thing with this part is make sure you don't cross thread anything. Getting the finger started like that one. Make sure that one started right. That one started. Now let's get this one started. It's hard when you can't see anything. This is where if you had a lift, we could lift the whole truck up and have it at eye level is so much easier. There we go, now it started. Pretty dark and overcast. I can't hardly see. Maybe y'all can see. I don't know. Hope so. Alright, let's take that one out. Alright, anyway, I'm going to bolt it back on there and then put the brake line back on. Let me mess with it a little bit and I'll show you in a minute. Alright, there it is. It is back on there. Everything's tight. A little bit of a challenge to line everything up, but we got it did. Now, I hope y'all can see this, but right here is the bleeder valve. Bleeds the air off the system. Now I've got that loose. What I want to do is do a gravity feed. Because sometimes you get somebody to pump up the brakes and open them and get the air out. But I am home alone. 
I'm going to loosen up that bleeder. I'm going to loosen up the other side. Excuse me. Then I'm going to put brake fluid back in it and just let it gravity feed back through there. Let it run back through until it runs out and makes a mess. And then I'll close them back up and we should be good to go. All right. Mama showed up at home. I got her to help me bleed the brakes out. That's a lot faster doing it that way. And she does not want to be on camera, so that's why I didn't show you that. Alright, put the cap back on. We got a mess. Brake fluid everywhere. Brake fluid all over the wheels and the brakes and all that, but that'll burn off. Ain't no big deal. And that is how you replace a wheel cylinder. Now, like I said, ideally I would have went ahead and put new shoes on it, had the rotors turned, I mean the drums turned and all that kind of stuff. But at the present moment, I am financially strapped, so I can't afford all of that right now. But at least I can go down the road now and I can stop. Which is always a good thing. Alright. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you later.